for me, this began as a labor of love, and it has become my passion. People of color get sicker when we contract the COVID-19 infection and we're more likely to die. So my research is about finding ways to equip us to fight the infection. This is about our health, this is about our humanity, and this is about saving lives. We must do all that we can to change the dismal COVID-19 numbers for our community, and it begins with you. Our strength lies in our sheer determination, our will, our actions, and our resilience. Because of what I do, I'm always on the go. And sometimes it goes on for weeks and weeks. Although the pandemic has been a time of great uncertainty, anxiety, and tragedy, it has also been for me a time of quiet and stillness. I've grown to appreciate the gifts that are my family and my friends. There's been a lot of transitioning and decision making and really figuring out this new way of life. But one of the greatest things that has happened in this time has been watching my children becoming part of the solution and constantly considering not only themselves, but how what actions they take affect the people around them. It's not all great because the kids are eager to get back to school, to see their friends. I've lost family members in my 911 work room. But I'm ready to get back to work when it's safe. African Americans and other people of color are dying at alarming rates from COVID-19. It's happening all over the United States, from Maine to California, from Washington State to Florida, and all points in between. The statistics are dire. African Americans are dying at 2.4 times the rate of Caucasians. For every 100,000 people who have contracted the disease, 83 Blacks have lost their lives, while only 34 Caucasians have died. Yet, African Americans make up only 13% of the U.S. population. Recent studies suggest that there may indeed be other medical issues that account for some of the disparities in death rates that we're seeing in patients with COVID-19. We do know that diseases like hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and cardiovascular disease are associated with worse outcomes in COVID-19. And these conditions affect black and brown people with disproportionately high rates. And diet and exercise are so important in controlling these conditions. Macronutrients are things that we're all familiar with. Those are proteins, fats, carbohydrates. But research shows that certain groups are more likely to have micronutrient deficiencies. The groups often affected are people of color who also happen to have the highest COVID death rates. So what are micronutrients? They're vitamins and minerals that are vital to our overall health and well-being. And because they may not be adequately produced in the body, we have to get them from our diet. These would include vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, and the family of B vitamins. Recent research from around the world now suggests that vitamin D deficiency may be a risk factor for poor outcomes and death rates in COVID-19. Vitamin D is so important for lung health and your immune health. Important factors in fighting COVID-19. In actuality, vitamin D is not a vitamin. It is a powerful hormone, although we call it a vitamin. It is so important for our overall health because it impacts the function of many cells in the human body. And there's a simple way to help yourself. I'm sure you know where I'm going now. We make vitamin D in the skin from exposure to the sun. Deeply or darkly pigmented skin requires significantly more sun exposure compared to white or lightly pigmented skin to make adequate vitamin D levels. So in darker skin individuals, if they don't get adequate sun exposure, our vitamin D levels are impacted, and moreover, we work indoors. Numerous studies document significant vitamin D deficiency in people of color in the United States, and we're certainly seeing the same thing in our population here in the United Kingdom. In fact, the death rate from COVID-19 is also higher in this population here in the UK 
and additionally amongst doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers where any societal issues will really not be relevant. This is biological. My husband Boris and I are very committed to protecting our children from COVID-19. We wear our masks, we've made masks, sold masks and given them away. We remain socially distant and we wash our hands, but we also know that it's not enough. Vitamin D is a well-known and well-recognized important vitamin for our health. So vitamin D has been studied extensively in COVID-19 patients. I would like to highlight a few of these studies. In one study, which was done in a hospitalized setting, 212 patients had COVID. Their vitamin D levels were checked, and what was found was very intriguing. Those patients whose vitamin D levels were low at baseline seemed to have a higher propensity to do worse and have more critical illness from COVID-19. In other studies looking at population levels of vitamin D in countries, one study in Europe showed that those countries where the average vitamin D level was low seemed to have worse epidemics of COVID-19. And in another study which looked at the same question from a global perspective, looking at Europe, United States, and also Asia, they found similar findings in the population. But what was also intriguing was some of the worst complications of COVID-19, like the so-called COVID-19 um, COVID cytokine storm, seemed to be much worse if the vitamin D levels were lower. All in all, these studies are important to analyze and take into account. While they don't reach the level of a randomized controlled trial, which would give us a lot of confidence that vitamin D supplementation is going to be beneficial, they are certainly pointing us in that direction. And given that the harm from vitamin D supplementation is so low, it makes an interesting and good, solid argument to supplement with vitamin D. The fight to stay safe from this virus means the whole family has to stay physically active. We have to keep our bodies strong. The whole family has to eat right, maintaining a healthy diet, and supplementing with vitamins D and C, which are particularly important in African-American families. We can practice self-care and we can support our overall health and our immune health in this vicious fight against the brutal enemy that is COVID-19. How do you maintain a healthy immune system? Well, one of the most important things is the mind-body connection. You can't separate the two. It's one organism. The mind and the body need to work well together. Stress reduction is so important. Keeping your stress levels low, that's really important. Another area that I'd like to emphasize is sleep. I have to tell you, in my opinion, healthy sleeping habits, waking up refreshed, is so important for the immune system to work. Try to do that. Don't watch TV late at night before you sleep. Don't eat too late. Get those sleep hours that are so important. Don't compromise on that. Can we consume enough micronutrients on a daily basis, given these very difficult economic times? Can we consume enough milk, eggs, cereal, fish to meet the required daily levels, particularly to maintain adequate vitamin D levels? The strongest role that has been demonstrated with vitamin D is to keep our bones healthy. However, in the past few years, there have been a lot of research, a lot of report that would indicate other roles of vitamin D. Specifically, vitamin D had been associated with respiratory infection. People with low vitamin D level tend to have more severe respiratory infection. And most recently, with COVID-19, there have been also reports of association of low vitamin D level and COVID-19 infection. Specifically, patients with low vitamin D level tend to have a higher probability of testing positive for COVID-19. And patients with severe COVID-19 infection resulting in fairly critical care within the hospital also tend to be associated with low vitamin D level. Clearly, this association and further studies needs to be done. It is, however, important for all of us to take adequate vitamin D. We also know that people of color tend to have low vitamin D level. This is about our health, our bodies and our minds. It's about helping our bodies fight COVID. We must fight COVID-19 like our futures and our lives depend on it. 
because it does. Hey everybody, it's Jennifer Lewis and I wanted to show up and lend my support to saying to everyone, we've got to stay as healthy as we can right now. You gotta eat as healthy as you can. You gotta exercise whenever you can. And just stay active and positive, positive thinking. Okay, let me tell you what happened to me. I ain't no doctor, but one told me I had a vitamin D deficiency. I said, wait a minute now, I already take zinc and vitamin C. She said, oh no, little girl, you gotta take all three. She said, DZC, <laughs> DZ and C. in the mirror. Say, I'm going to take care of myself for the people you love or your children. And if you need to call on the ancestors for a little strength, do that. But whatever it takes, take the DZ. Take the DZ, take the DZ, take the DZ. This is about our health. This is about our humanity. And this is about saving lives.